Well, good evening to you. You have just joined the midweek service of Believer's Family Worship Center, and we are located at 1604 East Admiral Doyle Drive in New Iberia, Louisiana. I'm so excited today about this special broadcast. We are celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. I want to tell you all about it, but you still have time to call a friend, tell them to tune in. I'm so excited and I want you to be excited about what God is doing and I want everybody to get in on it. So go ahead, you can share on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, holyconnection.tv, as well as our website, believersfamily.org. I am your Bible teacher tonight, Prophetess Sandy Archangel, and our ministry is under the auspices of our Bishop, Jeffrey Archangel. Listen, we're about to go into prayer. We want to bless God for you, so let us go to the Father in prayer. Father, it is today on this day that we come to celebrate who you are. We come to celebrate the people that you've called us to be, a prophetic people. We come to thank you, Father, for what you have done in your appointed times and seasons. So, oh God, as we delve into your word, we ask, Father, that you would indeed give us freedom of utterance, anoint us a Fresh, that, oh God, we might make the complex simple and that men and women may come to know who you are. We bless you. We give your name praise. We give your name glory. And it is in the name of Jesus that we say amen and amen. Well, beloved, I'm so excited about our setting. I don't know if you are, but I am just delighted because the Feast of Tabernacles is something that we want to study. You might say, why? Well, God gave the Jewish nation to be the stewards of his calendar, his Mohadim, the calendar, and that calendar was to be their catechism. And why they are the stewards of it is because our whole Judeo-Christian faith is founded and rooted in the what God gave the Jews to steward for us. So we continue to go back. Some people say, why well, study the Old Testament? Because as one uh, expositor said, and, and a lot of our theologians agree, that the Old Testament is the Messiah concealed, but the New Testament is the, uh, the Bible revealed. It is our Messiah revealed. So I've got so much inside of me and I just need to be able to unpack it today as we continue to get into what is God, why the feast? Three times a year, he said, put it on the calendar, let it be a catechism because it's going to be a learning experience, it's going to be a teaching experience so that we could be disciplined in the things of the Lord. Three times a year, Passover, hallelujah, when it celebrates what has already been done, the culmination of our Jesus as the Passover lamb. Then we have our Feast of Weeks. That is the Feast of Pentecost. That is the Feast of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost came down, and I tell you what, uh, that has already come into the earth according to Acts. We have celebrated and continue to celebrate that feast. But now we have the Feast of Tabernacles. This feast is prophetic because for the Jews and the Gentiles, because of the Jews and the church, hallelujah, this has not happened yet. It is going to happen, but it is, has not happened yet. So what the Lord wants us to do is go ahead and get in line, fall in line with this discipline so that we may understand what is to come. So we're going to talk about the Feast of Tabernacles today. The word tabernacle means to dwell in God, uh, desires to dwell with us. And I love it because Revelation gives us the reference how God says there is coming a day when there will be no more separation, no more separation between us and him, no more separation between heaven and and earth. No more separation because the bride of Christ, the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ is going to come down. Hallelujah. And how is he going to come down? He's going to come down and meet the earth. So there is going to be a merging 
of the heavens and the earth. And God says he's going to dwell with us forever and ever. I like the way he says it in Revelation 21. He says he's going to tabernacle with us. So today we are, are celebrating the prophetic feast of tabernacles. And we're going to read a scripture for you. And I want you to see what it says. It says in Leviticus, my God, let us go to it. Leviticus, uh, and we're going to go to the 23rd chapter, and we're going to begin reading with verse 39. It says, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord. Seven days on the first day shall it be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And you shall take you on the first day. Watch what, how, what they have to do. He says, first of all, you're going to keep it as a holy time. For eight days, two Sabbaths, one on the front end and one on the back end. And then you have from that first Sabbath, count seven days, you're going to observe this holiday. And it says in verse 40, And you shall take of you on the first day the bowls of godly trees, goodly trees, branches of palm, and the bowls of thick trees, the willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days, and you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Now, beloved, look what he says here. He says in verse 42, you shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That this is the purpose of the exercise. This is the purpose of all of the trouble they're going to go through. It says here that in verse uh, 42, you shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. That your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. He wants them to know, I'm repeating it again, that your generations, generations meaning it is to be perpetual, that every generation, even to today, would know that I, hallelujah, caused the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. And Moses commanded, declared unto the children of Israel the feast of, of hallelujah the Lord. Listen, God commanded it. God wanted it to be so. God willed it so, beloved. Why did he will it so? So that they could remember that he took them out. And not just that they took them out, but how he took them out. One scripture says that he took them out on eagle's wings took them out of a land of bondage. But he says that on your journey, he says, I want them to dwell in booths. And that is why we have the setting that we have today. Because even today, the Orthodox Jews, they are building booths attached to their houses. So that it's like a tent. Because another name for the Feast of Tabernacles is Sukkot or Sakat. They, you know, like we say, you're living in, on, you're sleeping on a cot, the Sukkot. And another name for Sukkot is tent. So today we're going to, if we had to call this message anything, I think it's kind of cute. We're going to call it uh, the tent in time. Because in every generation, they are to look back in time and then look forward to the future time of what God is going to do. The word Sukkot means tent. It means a booth that to go outside and dwell. That meant for those eight days. Remember, two Sabbaths on this uh, particular one. Eight days. Why two Sabbaths? Well, my speculation is the first Sabbath is to keep that he took them out of Egypt. The second Sabbath is to remind them that they are living in tents. This is, the, in other words, the house you live in, the condominium you live in, the apartment you live in, whatever you live in, he wants you to know that that's temporary because God has another home. So he wants us to look forward 
prophetically in expectation of that new home in that new Jerusalem. I tell you what, beloved, I'm so excited about prophecy. I'm so excited about God still prophesying. So it says that they had to build a tent and they had to be able to get foliage. He wanted it decorated. Hallelujah. He wanted them to know that he wanted them to decorate it. And not only that it had to be decorated, but he wanted foliage on it. He wanted he wanted leaves. He wanted it decorated with trees and bowls. He had and then he had a particular kind of foliage that he wanted on it. It's kind of like when you make a bouquet for a bride and she wants particular flowers. Well, God wants particular things to be around that a booth of that tent that they built. He says, and then when you build it, set it up. Have your tables. You could eat on the floor. You know, like when people go camping, you're not going to eat outside the tent. He wants you to eat inside the tent because that tent is to represent, the booth is to represent what? How he protects us, how he covers us, how he provides. He protects, he provides for us. Uh, his presence is with us. He wanted them to be able to build a tent. So let's talk about the tent. I love the tent. The tent is supposed to be built, like we said, attached, hallelujah, to the house, or it could be separated. Some people, you know, they get elaborate with them. But what they do is they, the tent is to be a three-sided tent. He wanted one side to always be open so that they could look outside, look up into the sky and into the heavens. Have you ever prayed when you went outside and just looked up into the heavens? Have you ever done that? It will expand your prayer life. Hallelujah. It will increase your faith life because he says, I want you to see how I took care of you, how my presence is always with you, how he led them out pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. He says, I want that to be open so that you can know that not only am I protecting you, providing for you, but my presence is with you. He says, and I don't want you to forget it. He says, now, as you do that, he says, eat your meals in there, sleep in there, and then tell your family, tell your children how I took you out of Egypt and brought you into the land of promise. So exciting. So the three-sided tent had to be built and they had to set the table so that they could have their uh, meal and they could rejoice. And the thing about this is that he commanded the Feast of Tabernacles to be one of rejoicing. He wanted it to be a celebration. You know, when I kind of look at it, it is sort of akin to our family Thanksgiving celebrations. You know, when the family gathers, everybody bring food, somebody cook. It's just a big reunion. It's just such a blessing. Well, I don't know how your family gatherings are for Thanksgiving. I know some of you think about sports and some of you, no, no. But when the family comes together and uh, some family members we haven't seen, and then some we see all the time, but we just get to love on each other, have a prayer, a meal together. It is such a blessed time. Well, that is what they do during the Feast of Tabernacles, only that they remember where they come from out of Egypt, but where they're going, the new Jerusalem, the one that God has eternally blessed us with and wants us to look forward to in expectation. Such a, such a joy, I'm telling you, beloved. It's just such a joy to be able to talk about this. Now, we're going to look at, since we have our tent built, he says, now, this is how I want you to decorate it. And we're going to start with the foliage. He says, I want you to have goodly trees. But when we really dug into this, the goodly trees had to be a fruit-bearing tree. That's right. And it had to bear a certain kind of fruit. Well, the Jews today, they use the uh, fruit trees. It's an E-T, I got to spell it for you, E-T-R-O-G, the E-T-R-O-G fruit bearing tree it bears large fruit that looks like lemon and it's very colorful but it's a fruit bearing uh tree and that tree 
And that particular fruit, the uh, Jewish rabbi says they chose that one. They select that one, even though it didn't actually come into existence until generations later. But they chose that one generations later because it is a symbolic, it is symbolic of the heart. So uh, you could see the foliage and they want the, the fruit to already be ripe on the tree. Just like you'd see a lemon tree, they wanted the etrog to be there and it would also decorate with color. Then they had to use the branches of a date palm tree. And that palm tree, y'all know what the palm does. It praises, hallelujah. And that is, so if you like making bouquets, I have a sister who loves to work with flowers and she gathered different kinds. Well, just think about it. You have the etrog that is fruit bearing and you actually have the fruit on the branch that you take off. Then you would combine that with the palm and the palm, just like the etrog represented the heart, the palm represents the spine or the backbone. Hallelujah. It is so awesome. Then the third uh, foliage that they had to bring in was the myrtle tree. My God. Now the myrtle tree, hallelujah, is the hadas. Now some get deep because if you remember the name of Esther, her natural name was Hadassian, Hadassah, and her name meant myrtle tree. And I always wondered what in the world did that have to do with it? But the myrtle tree, the branches from the myrtle tree had to be decorated and added to that. And I love it because uh, the fruit bearing tree, it had fragrance and it had fruit. Hallelujah. Now the palm tree, hallelujah, it uh, did not have any fragrance, my God, hallelujah, but it had fruit, it had dates, but the myrtle tree, hallelujah, it had fragrance, but no fruit, and that part, you know, just like the uh, etrog showed the heart, just like the palm it represents the spine, well, the myrtle represents the lips, and didn't Esther lips go to work? <laughs> she said, if I perish, let me perish. She saved the nation. Well, I believe that is also a prophetic implication. Hallelujah. And then, uh, glory to God, the fourth tree represents the eyes. And would you believe it's none other than the willow. And in Leviticus, it says, in Leviticus 23, it says, I want the willows from the brook. Now, you remember when the children of Israel was taken into Babylon and they, they said they had to hang their harps on the willows. Why? Because now the willow represents the eyes because it was tears of crying. But now he wants us to have tears of joy. Hallelujah. Because we are no, you ever been so happy about something it brought you to tears. Hallelujah. So the myrtle tree didn't have any fragrance. It didn't have any fruit. But what came out of their eyes, it was a remembrance that even though you sowed in tears, hallelujah, you're going to reap in joy. So this particular feast is so awesome. This particular feast is so blessed because we are celebrating, hallelujah, the Feast of Tabernacles. And God wanted the Sakat to be a big party for seven days. They had to do that for seven days. They had to work it out. Now, you know, Jesus, hallelujah. He, he said all of the scripture, all of it is all about me. So you remember the parable of in Matthew 13, the para of the, the parable of the sower sowing and he sowed on different kinds of soil. Well, you know, if we, he taught it to them in reverse, we gave you, hallelujah, the divine order that they were to bring things in. They built the Sukkot. So what was first? The estrog, which was the fruit, then the palm, which was the backbone, then the, uh, hallelujah, the uh, willows, hallelujah. I skipped one. The palm, hallelujah, the palm, the, the oh my, y'all working with me. <laughs> Glory to God. The goodness trees. The fruit bearing was the estrage first, then the palm, hallelujah, then the myrtle. I was forgetting Esther, the myrtle. And then the last one was the willows. Well, let's look at what happened and how Jesus 
uh, did this such a such a done look when he when we call him the master we talking about the master teacher hallelujah the willows remember the eyes they had no fragrance and no fruit he said when the word is scattered when it is just uh you know laid out on topsoil guess what with no understanding hallelujah you can't even get the word and it's stolen from you why because your eyes are affected even though you can't see Hallelujah. You can't understand. So he said, just like the willows, hallelujah, there are tears. He said, but in Matthew 13, let's look at the soil. What did it do? It bought no fragrance, no fruit. So they uh, read, they hear, but they don't understand. My God. Then look at the second type soil. It's on stony places. So we're going to look at the myrtle with the lips. Hallelujah. Fragrant with no fruit. That particular song, they received with joy, but no root. When tribulation and persecution came, they were offended, couldn't take root. So with the myrtle, hallelujah, Esther used her lips, hallelujah, but she went to work. But some of us, we, we, we talk a good talk. We use our lips, but hallelujah, we, we talk the faith talk. You know, we make our confessions, we make our declarations, but when tribulation and persecution come, we get offended. Then look at the next type soil in Matthew 13, 18 through 23. It says that it's sold among thorns. Well, the palm, the palm is to represent the backbone, but instead here, the thorns choked, they, would, they choked the seed, how? By the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. You know, the palm is emblematic of praise. Now, in the flesh, how many times we praise or we want praise from men because of what we have, what we can do, what we have achieved. But the God's order for praise is that we give him glory and honor and that forms our backbone. But he says here that the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choked the word. But now we back down to the first thing he told them. He says to bring forth that goodly foliage, the estrogen. Why? Fragrant and fruit. It represents our heart. It is not only fragrant, but it brings forth fruit. My, I tell you what, this is so awesome, beloved. That is how they built it. Can you see how they are to build the tabernacle it is to represent he said come on outside you know just come on outside he says and i want you to take a good look at the environment i want you to look into the heavens i want you to know that i am your god i am your creator but above all i am your father so just like our homes are to represent our earthly house where we live in he says our body is also the temple or the tabernacle of God. So when we look at there are other similitudes to tabernacles. Our body, he says, you remember, you've heard this scripture given many times that in 2 Corinthians 5 and 1, but if this earthly tabernacle, talking about our body, be dissolved, glory, I have another building prophesying, not only do I have another body that is now incorruptible, but I have another home, hallelujah, that is eternal in the heavens. So uh, we have that as a, a similar to. Now, you know the prayer shawls that we, we put on to pray? Some of us pray with Jewish prayer shawls, and we don't really know what that means, but it's the uh, talit. And you can find that in the talit shawl, Numbers 15, 38 through 40. Uh, the prophet told them, how to make that talit. Why? Because if you didn't have a, a tent back then, once they had gotten uh, into numbers, he said, I want you to make a shawl, put it over your head. And that talit actually becomes a prayer tent. When you put your prayer shawl on, you are actually getting inside your tent. Hallelujah. You notice how the three sides cover you, but then there's one side open. That's so you can be face to face with God. Oh, I love it. I, I don't know if you love it, but I, I love it. So the talit and then our churches are our tabernacles. So this feast of tabernacles, we, you know, I got a little excited in some places, but you know, y'all got to hang in there with me. 
We want you to see that God is doing some tremendous things in the earth. He is blessing us. Hallelujah. And he wants us to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for these next eight days. Why? So that we can tell our children's and our children's children for every generation, not only what Jesus did when he, uh, what the Lord did when he took them out of Egypt, what Jesus did when he saved us out of the world, but that we have another home. And this earth realm is not our home. Hallelujah. How many times, I don't know about you, I've heard our elders, we even sung songs about I'm going home. I'm going, my God, he wants us to celebrate and look forward to moving into our brand new home. Well, beloved, here I am. I'm so excited. You could see I took it on the outside. Why? Just to be close to nature. Hallelujah. Just to be exposed to the environment, the creation of God. If you are not born again, why don't you come on and pray with me? It's time for you to come on in the tent. Hallelujah. And receive God. The tent of salvation, which is where we experience God's presence, his provision, and his protection. He Listen, he said, don't think about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. He said, I want you to remember, just like I took the Jews out, didn't I feed them? Didn't I protect them? Didn't I care for them? Didn't I provide for them? Wasn't my presence with them? He said, and as I was with them, I'm going to be with you. Even more so now, how much more when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ. So why don't you come along and pray with me? Just say, God, if you are not saved, just say, God, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Messiah. His blood was shed for me. And I believe that when he died on the third day, he was raised from the dead. And because I believe in that foundational truth, according to your word, I am saved. Beloved, if you prayed that prayer with me, I just want you to thank the Lord for who he is. I want you to just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to just give God some praise. Hallelujah, that you are saved. The Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice glory when we give our heart to the Lord. Well, it's our giving time. Listen, God demands some things during these feasts, but he wants us to get into our discipline. He demands our time, our effort, and our gifts. So it is giving time. And we want you to know that you can bring your tithes, your offerings, and your seed sowing to Believer's Family Worship Center. It should be on the screen, located at 1604 East Atmo Doyle Drive in New Iberia, Louisiana. Glory to God. Or you can go to our website, believersfamily.org, and you can follow the promptings. Or you can do like we do with our cash app. Hallelujah. Our cash app is cash app dollar sign BFWC. 1604. And if you are a texter, right there on the screen, the numbers to text should let you know where you can text and follow the promptings to give during this most holy time of the year. Well, beloved, I tell you what, let's put our faith on our time, our energy, and our giving. Father, we thank you that you give seed to the sower. Thank you for the seed. Bread to the eater. Thank you for the bread. Multiply our seed sown. Thank you for multiplication. Hallelujah. We're the head and not the tail. We live above only, not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. Everything we put our hands to, glory to God, shall prosper. Hallelujah. Want to tell somebody, shake yourself. Hallelujah. I receive a hundredfold. Receive a hundredfold. Deuteronomy says, and a thousand times more. Yes, indeed. Put your foot on it. I'm out of debt. All my needs are met. I've got plenty more to seed and store. I bind lack poverty, insufficiency, and I lose the supernatural abundance of God in my life now. The supernatural abundance of God in my life now. The supernatural abundance of God in my life now. Well, beloved, it is tabernacle time. 
so excited about God, the specialties of what he do, does. The portals of heaven are open, hallelujah, when we celebrate these three feasts. You might say, well, I'm not Jewish. Now, you don't have to build a tent. You know, sometimes we eat outside. We don't build a tent. But you know what? When you get in your prayer, you have your prayer shawl, put your prayer shawl on. You might say, I don't have a prayer shawl. Well, cover your head. Hallelujah. Let your face be out. You know, just in honor of what God has done and prophetically looking forward to what God will do. So excited. Hallelujah. So excited about what the Lord is doing. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for you now as we close this broadcast. We want you to know that we love you. God loves you. Our bishop wants you to know that you can come and join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. 1604 East Atmo Doyle Drive in New Iberia, Louisiana. It's all about souls. We're in a season when it's all about souls. Go ahead and call somebody, check on somebody, implore them, invite them to come into the house. And as you bring them into the house, our prayer is that just like you put a puzzle together. God will bring people from the north, south, east, and west to be a part of our ministry so that we can continue to grow and that we continue to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world. Well, beloved, whoosh, I'm outside. I hate to leave you, but I have to go. So we're going to pray as we close. We're going to pray for you. Let us go to the Father in prayer. Father, we thank you that you honor this time, that you accept this time of us giving you gratitude, love, and appreciation for everything you do during the feast. Now, Lord, those that need healing, we release it now in the name of Jesus. Those that need wisdom, we release it now in the name of Jesus. Those, oh God, that need provision, we release that now. Based on the anointing from your word, we release it now in the name of Jesus. And Father, our faith is now in expectation mode for miracles, signs, and wonders. Do what you do, Lord. And Father, as we pray during tabernacles, if there are any prodigals, if there are any estranged family members, Holy Spirit knows how to draw. We thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit and our expectation is drawing them now, not only to the foot of the cross, but to the reunion of family that you have called us to be in the earth realm. We thank you for it. We give your name praise and glory. Well, beloved, I tell you what, you can see I'm out here. That sun beginning to rise. Glory, glory, glory. So as we leave this place, but never your presence. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Hmm. And be gracious to you. Lift up his countenance upon you. Give you his peace. May his righteousness go before you. And may his glory be your rear guard. And it is in the name of Jesus that we say amen and amen. God bless you, beloved.